Boop! <laughs> oh Jesus, how long, how long? Ay, ay, ay. Methodist. Ay, ay, all right. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove because sometimes I do that. The mouth will go faster than the brain. Okay, so check me out. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? All right, follow me along. A genuine revival is not coming. A genuine... Look at me. Look at me. I know I'm in the little box. So don't worry. We're not going to be on OBS for this video for the entirety. Look at me. A genuine revival, as Satan wants you to believe, has happened in... Where is this? Kentucky? A genuine revival... Seeing a nation return onto truth. The, and what truth? What truth? What Jesus? There are all kinds of Jesuses. What truth? What Jesus are these people returning to? Hmm? Are they searching for the old paths of the scripture? Hmm? No. A genuine revival is not coming, people. Okay? Don't worry, we're going to discuss this in Genesis. <laughs> this, is, this is not funny, but it's laughable. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, on to verse so, 21. Love not, this isn't funny, but it's just, uh, well, <laughs> this, I'm sorry, the, the, the ridiculousness of this and how, how far gone this pathetic, disgusting thing called Christianity is. Okay, Christianity, dear friend, is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. Okay, Christianity, especially as it sits today, comes from Satan, Rome, okay? But, let's continue. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that that Antichrist shall come. There is not a the in front of it. Okay? You search the scriptures. The word Antichrist, uh, I appear, I believe it appears five times. Um, not one time does the word the appear in front of Antichrist. Just saying. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time, and here it is. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. Revival. Hmm. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. You yourself don't know, don't know all things, but uh, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, our Father, Jesus Christ, who dwells in those who are saved permanently until the day of redemption. 
uh, the spirit of truth will lead you, guide you into all truth. And God knows everything, okay? <laughs> that doesn't mean you know everything. Uh, some of you charlatan preachers out there need to be reminded of that. You don't know everything. I certainly don't myself, okay? But um, <clears throat> we have an unction from the Holy One, and that unction is that seal until the day of redemption, the Lord himself, okay? I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And what does he say in John 17, 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Scriptures, the authorized version. If these people even read a Bible, it's doubtful. But I, I, I don't know, you know? I uh, recently had the opportunity to witness once again onto a... <laughs> My dear Methodist friends, <coughs> Methodists, Ugh. you know what? I, you, I, don't bother me with what Methodism once was. What is it today? What is it today? And which do you know that I believe it was? Um, uh, it, it, and here, here, it, it says so here in this article that you. This is the Wikipedia link that will be in the description. But yeah, yeah, this. Uh, uh, John Wesley, uh, I believe he was um, Calvinistic in that he uh, uh, was limited atonement or partial atonement, meaning that God only died for the elect, his chosen people who he chose, and, and, and the ones who are not elect going to hell. That, that, that's a, uh, Calvinism. Calvinism. One of the greatest heresies there is, is Calvinism. Hmm. But <coughs> we who are saved, we have the Holy Ghost. And he leads us, guides us into all truth. Okay? And these people of this um, Ashbury revival that happened in Kentucky, a Methodist thing. I, I found out about this by talking to some Methodists, uh, you know, uh, putting tracks out, you know at their gathering at their uh, holy, blessed uh, mother church building, um, you know, and um, some mentioned this to me about there's a great revival. Did you hear about what happened in Kentucky? I'm like, no, what's this? And it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, if you are <laughs> interested in this nonsense, um, the link will be for you uh, there, down there in the description box for you. But I just want to read a little bit of this. Okay, just, just the top part. Okay. The 2023 Ashbury Revival was a Christian <laughs> revival at Ashbury University in Wilmore, Kentucky. The revival was sparked by students spontaneously staying in Hughes Auditorium following a regularly scheduled chapel service on February the 8th, 2023. Hmm. And, you know, I just glibly looked up uh, on this, just glibly, because I, I just recently uh, found out about this. I knew about this um, going into this week, but unfortunately, the, the, the Lord wanted me to rebuke a harlot devil. But now we're doing this. Um, yeah. Let me ask you something. Do you, do you still believe in a coincidence, huh? Do you still believe in coincidence? Now, now let's finish this paragraph here, okay? Now, first of all, right away, you see a problem here. Regularly scheduled chapel service on February the 8th, 2023. So they were in a church building, number one. And church buildings are not sanctified, sanctioned within the New Testament for us today in this dispensation. People who do not rightly divide the word of truth like to talk about the temple and blah, 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 blah. 
No, no. These people are idolaters. They are closet Catholics worshiping a building. Okay? It's nonsense. It's cooey. <clears throat> okay? That's problem number one. That's problem number one. Okay? But the thing about the, the temple, okay? Ah, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The Lord saves you, seals you until the day of redemption. He dwells within you, hence your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And let's go to Acts chapter 7, which a lot of heretics like to go to to try to justify this satanic revival. A, a genuine revival is not coming. But I do believe that a revival will come where people will be turning all to that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan. I do believe that will happen. But a genuine returning unto truth, unto the scriptures, a nation cleaning up itself, uh, getting rid of the pornography, uh, ending, a, a, for real, ending abortion and all the evil and sin of uh, like America or your nation, is that going to happen? <laughs> Absolutely not. You're crazy if you think that. Deceiving and being deceived. A genuine revival is not going to come. Okay? Oh, don't, don't worry. We're going to talk about that. Well, Acts chapter 7, uh, uh, which uh, Stephen, uh, who is quoting out of Isaiah, uh, verse 48 and 49, uh, on the verse, uh, verses 48 on the verse 50 in Acts chapter 7. And he is quoting Isaiah 66, out of Isaiah 66. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? 51 on verse 53, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. He was specifically talking on the Jewish people when he said that. But, oh no, we speak in tongues, we believe in uh, the miracles are still there, I speak in tongues more than I, shut up. The Lord rebuke you, okay? The Lord rebuke you. All right. That spirit that these people were following was that spirit of Antichrist. Okay. All right. Because in the time of Jacob's trouble, where are you going to be led to worship? In a church building. Okay. The temple is going to be rebuilt, of course. Yes. Yes. But remember that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go in there and saying, I am. That's what I believe he's going to say, I am. And he's going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, church buildings. Problem number one. The biggest problem. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Following the gathering, Ashbury President... Kevin Brown sent out a brief to brief to sentence email. There's worship happening in Hughes. You're welcome to join. The news of the phenomena quickly spread through social media and in Christian in Christian online publications. The revival has been compared to similar revivals at Ashbury, notably one that took place in 1970. You believe in coincidence, huh? <laughs> Don't worry. We're gonna let's let's finish this so we can get this off of the screen and get to what we gotta get to. Let's okay. If you if you want to know about this, the link will be in the description box. Okay, just just this is the springboard. Okay, let's continue. Which had far-reaching consequences in Methodism, 
culture of the United States. Ah, and the growth of the Jesus movement. <laughs> yeah, believe in a coincidence, huh? <laughs> this is so. Th th any anybody, even these some of these Christians ought to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. There, there's something wrong here. But no, the ignorance of what God says in the Scripture is uh, Satan's one of Satan's greatest weapons which had far-reaching consequences in Methodism, culture of the United States, and the growth of the Jesus movement. Notably, news of the revival largely spread on social media as the participants are many members of Generation Z, whatever that is. It has been attended by approximately 15,000 people each day. By its end, the revival brought 50,000, 70,000 visitors to Wilmore, representing more than 200 academic institutions and multiple countries. Mm. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. Now, enough of this. Okay, now we're on to the camera. Praise the Lord, I have an editing thing on this so I can put these things together. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. The, uh, now, you believe in a coincidence? I know uh, some people who are aware of scripture uh, talk about like how Solomon mentions chance and I have one guy <laughs> in conversation or in conversation in correspondence and email saying about, well, Moses said, if by chance our years be so-and-so, you know, it's like, uh, you mean Psalm 90? It's like, yes, yes, by chance. See, Moses talked about by chance. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Psalm 90. Oh, where is that? Uh, where he says, oh, yeah. Yeah, verse 10 in Psalm 90. This, <laughs> the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength, not chance, They be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Yeah, the email, the guy I was emailing, I think was a guy, whatever. Um, he's talking, we were talking about this, I'll never, <laughs> and he mentioned about that in Psalm 90, and I gave him the verse. I, I never heard back from him after that. <laughs> but Solomon says, time and chance happeneth to them all. Who's the author of chance? You believe in a coincidence? Hmm? Like something, like nothing, or like exploded into something, coming from how? How do these stupid um, uh, uh, evolutionists say it? That it comes from a small point, like on a piece of paper or something. Nothing exploded, and from nothing exploding comes something, and here we are, millions and billions of years later, in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, some whatever nonsense. Coincidences do not exist. Nothing ever just happens. Okay? Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? Ha ha ha. That this Methodist revival happens. And then we hear about this Jesus Revolution movie. That has the guy from the chosen... Uh, Mormon-influenced um, Christian television show in that, and it's based off of the Jesus movement in the 70s, which saw young men with long hair, beards, which eventually promoted the free love thing, okay? God is love. And what was happening there were people were, of course, taking the things of the Sermon on the Mount, turn the other cheek, love, what you know, God is love, and turning it into something perverse. Yeah. The Jesus movement. Okay. Which promoted and 
had a lot of sodomy. Remember, that was in the, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, on the heels of the Vietnam War with the make love, not war, and promiscuity, and sodomy. It's all in love, and Jesus is a God of love, and love, and love, and shut up. Coincidence, huh? This revival happens, and out comes this movie. Wow, huh? And, and, and some of you think that's from God the Father. It is from the little G God of this world, but God the Father? <laughs> oh, dear people, no. No, it is not. No, it is not. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? But coincidence. Coincidence. Let's, let's, let's read a, a few verses on coincidence, okay? Let's do, let's do that, okay? Uh, Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Please follow me along. I expect you to. I want to speak to you as if you are. Okay? Psalm 94, verses 8 down to verse 11. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, fool who says in his heart there is no God. When will ye be wise, wisdom equated unto fear the Lord? He that planted the ear shall he not hear. He that formed the eye shall he not see. He that chastiseth the heathen shall not he correct. He that teacheth man knowledge shall not he know. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Hmm. You might be saying, what does that have to do with coincidence? Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Verses 1 on verse 12. <laughs> This is already too much scripture for you. Um, <laughs> good luck. That's what we're about here. Okay? The last video. And all of you, praise be unto the Lord Jesus Christ for all of the scriptures that those of you in the previous video put in. And, and, and brother, or one brother, with, um, with uh, you know, how he basically gave a brief rundown of the gospel, okay, basically, um, you know, uh, that, that was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful comments in the previous video in the comment section, okay, because that video was aimed uh, towards lost people. But, yeah, if this is already too much scripture for you, you need to go watch a couple of six-minute videos or whatever they are, however, whatever you're into. Okay, that's not, that, that's not what this is about here. It's about this here. Okay? Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. There is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy presence, from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. That, that verse right there, remember that, you know, okay, take your little pen and mark that. That's a really good verse that you can throw at people who want to say that hell is merely being absent from the presence of God. Boom. Uh, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. And you read in the book of Revelation how the smoke of their torment riseth up for, uh, continually in the presence of the Lamb. Okay, that, that's nonsense. Okay, um, who runs hell? Um, God does, okay? All right? So yeah, that's, that's a good verse for you to throw at people well. Hell is just being away from the presence of the Lord. You're crazy. Deceiving and being deceived. Let's continue. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, 
but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So there's nothing that happens outside of God knowing about it or seeing it. Okay? Nothing, you're, you're not going to take God by surprise. You can't hide anything from God. He sees everything. He knows everything. He's omnipresent, omni, omniscient, omnipotent. He's everywhere. He's, he can see. You're not hiding anything from God. Nothing surprises God. Okay? And if the God you worship um, is surprised, it's not the God of the scriptures. Okay, it, it, it is not. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Verses 18. On to 32. <clears throat> Appropriate. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Did those poor fools of the Ashbury Revival or whatever that thing was by the Methylix, okay? Uh, d d were, they, were they searching the scriptures? Or was it a emotional Christian event, a Christian experience? Hmm? Was it a revival of weeping and turning to the Lord and getting to the scriptures? Hmm? Look at these Big time revivals that has happened in America. What have they amounted to? Hmm? Is America better off or, <laughs> or worse off? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're crazy. There's one quote I saw uh, looking this up uh, where they said when they went into that church building, Phallus House, um, they said this doesn't feel like um, America 2023. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all about feelings. It's all about emotions. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, verse 19 and continuing on to verse 32. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart in the Latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Now, hold on. When it comes to this topic of revival, these stupid, and I'm being polite, these stupid charismatic Pentecostals, okay, with their tongue talking and revival coming, and they like to throw out this, the phrase, the latter days, and then they go to Joel, and then they go to Acts chapter 2, and they try to blend that together and make that doctrinally equivalent for us today. It is not, okay? When I was, when we, me and the Lord, were putting this together, um, the latter days thing, you know, uh, the phrase latter days appears seven times, I believe, okay? But as I was looking that up, I kept thinking, and I even said this to a brother, it's like, I, I think the Lord had me to do something on the latter days. And as I was looking at the, the, the verses up, kept getting roadblock, roadblock, nothing. The Lord was like, Brad, you, you already did something. It's like, I did. I did? I did. And then he's like, look up latter rain. And it's up. So if you are one of those who want to um, twist and pervert latter rain, you have questions about that, huh? Huh? You one of them charismatic twits? You know? Charismatic. You know that the charismatic movement did begin with the Methodists? Okay? Actually, no, that, that's partly true. Okay? In, pro, in so called Protestantism, it began with the Methodists, but it was already there in the Kundalini, in Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth, in Roman Catholicism. Okay? Okay, but it is reported known amongst Protestants, so called among the Methodists. Okay, warning, warning. Okay, so the those of you who want to try to take something that is specifically talking about the Jewish people and their return unto their Lord and the blessing therein, 
who want to take latter days and twist it and try to make it uh, relevant scripturally, doctrinally for us today. You're heretics. You're lying to people. Any questions about that? In the description box. A brief exposure of the latter days or, or latter rain movement. or excuse, Latter rain. That's what it is. Excuse me. I, I was saying latter days. Latter rain. Latter rain. That's what I meant to say. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the latter rain movement. Latter rain movement. The charismatics like to take those promises about the latter rain. Okay? The latter rain. This says latter days. The latter rain. And take latter rain and make it equivalent for today. Not so. If you have any questions about that, like I said, description box. Link for that will be in there. Okay? All right? Excuse me. I was meant to say uh, latter, uh, latter rain. Latter days appears more than seven. I was talking about latter rain. Latter rain appears seven times. One second, please. Yes, excuse me. Seven times the, the phrase latter rain appears in scriptures. I meant to say latter rain. I mistakenly said, excuse me, latter days. Latter rain, okay? Again, any questions about that? Look in the description box because these people want to take promises that are specifically for the Jews when the Jews will return unto their Lord, their Messiah, their King, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, and the blessings that will happen because of that. That is what latter rain is talking about. When you have these charismatic devils uh, who want to take that and make that relevant doctrinally for today, they are lying to you. Okay? In the description box. Now let's continue. Sorry about that mess up. Okay? Verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Oh, one of the ways you can tell a false prophet is how they want to run to the forefront and be, Hey, everybody, look at me. Look at every single one of our enemies has this one trait with their myriad of channels and how they want to be the center of attention all the time. Okay. They want to be the big shot. They want to be well known. They want to be run. They want to run up to the forefront. They want to, ah, you know, true sign. One of the true signs of a false prophet. Okay. So watch out for that. Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And what was that revival about? I can guarantee you what it was about without even looking that much into it. It was all about entertainment, about emotionalism and feelings and sensationalism, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because it wasn't a genuine uh, act of God, as it were. The little G got of this world, but not of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God of hands at the Lord and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I see that I shall not see him? Saith the Lord, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Okay? Nothing gets by God. You're not going to pull the wool's wool over the eyes of God. Okay? You're not going to fool him. You're not going to deceive him. He sees everything. Okay? So anything in your life that happens, God is aware of it. Okay? God is aware of it. Okay? Hence, there is always something behind something. Nothing ever just happens. Okay? Okay? You got to get that through your head. Okay, you can argue, you want to argue that all day to your chartreuse in the face? Be my guest, okay? Uh, walk with the Lord for a number of years, and then you'll soon realize there is no coincidence. There is no coincidence, okay? Time and chance happeneth to them all. Who is the author of that chance? God is not the author of confusion, okay? Who is the author of that chance? Hmm? Hmm? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right. I have heard what the prophets said, 
that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. What are we reading to? 32. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? What is verse 28 talking about? You look at all these people. You say, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. We've talked about this in videos before as well. Look up uh, Refuting Charismatic Heresy. Okay. Those who have a dream, let them tell their dream. And those who have the scriptures... Okay, these people who have these dreams about, you know, their rapture and Jesus said, no. Can the Lord uh, show you truth in dreams? Yes. Yes, he can. Yes, I believe he can. But see, when you got these people talking about a rapture dream or God said this to me, it's contrary all the time. It's always contrary to scripture. Or if it is, if it does coincide some way in Scripture, it is never a in a context of rightly divided. It's taking something from the Old Testament and trying to make it relative for today. Like, for example, when these putzes have these uh, dreams about a coming prosperity, and if you give, they take, they go to Malachi, which was for. Uh, the dispensation of the law because they had an actual physical temple to take care of. Okay, it's nonsense like that. Okay, what he's saying in verse 28 is someone who has a dream, compare that dream with scripture and which one stands. Okay, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, Jack. You understand? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> I should have shut up. Is not my word like a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces, lowercase r? What rock are you people standing on? The capital R rock, who is our Lord Jesus Christ? Or Dwayne the Rock Johnson, the little geek god of this world? huh? And fire, word is a fire, it burns you, it chafes your buttocks, doesn't it? Yeah, and like a hammer that breaks the breaketh the rock in pieces. Oh yeah, see, the scripture does that. It burns you, it breaks you, it heals you, it nurtures you, it strengthens you. You're lost. Hmm? You're hearing the word. It's burning you. It's breaking you. It's cutting you, or pricking you. Right? See? Yeah. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord. That steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. This revival is an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And, or this is this revival in Kentucky among the Methodists <laughs> uh, is an act of God, is from God Himself. No, it wasn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? Behold, I am against the prophets saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And hence, you look at the history of the revivals here in America, what have they, has, has America become better? Huh? No. No. No, it hasn't. Like I said, latter rain, you got these devils who want to twist what latter rain actually is. Latter rain is in context for the, the Jewish people, not scripturally, doctrinally for us today. Okay? Yes, there is uh, for instruction and in righteousness. Yes, doctrinally. Okay? Doctrine. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Those scriptures that talk about latter rain are not for us today in this dispensation, okay? You have to understand that, my dear friend. You have to understand that, my dear friend. 
okay? And some will talk about, well, what about the revivals in Acts? Acts, Acts, which is a book of transition from going from the dispensation of the law, going to this present dispensation, which we are in, by grace through faith. A dispensation unlike any other, where God himself will permanently dwell within the saved, born again believer, okay? All right, in the Old Testament, God was not a permanent resident. There was no seal until the day of redemption. In this dispensation, you go unto the Lord according to his terms, not your own. He saves you. He seals you. Unlike any other dispensation in history or will be, except for the exception and the time of Jacob's trouble with the 144,000 Jews, they will be sealed. It ain't the Jehos, it's the Jews. Okay, the 144,000 Jews uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble reading in the book of Revelation, they are sealed. Everyone else, no, no. no. That's what makes this dispensation so unique in the history of, of the world, okay? It really does, all right? But during the book of Acts, it was a thing of transition. The sign gifts were there, okay? The apostles were still alive, okay? And the sign gifts started to diminish over time after Acts chapter 7 with the stoning of Stephen, because it was in Acts 7 when Jewry, and as a whole, rejected the kingdom of God. They had already rejected the kingdom of heaven, which is the physical kingdom, okay, which our Lord is going to establish at his second coming when he comes back with us, his body, who get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But he's going to come back at his second coming to establish the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. You read the scriptures. Kingdom of heaven is always a reference onto the physical kingdom. Kingdom of God is a reference uh, most of the time onto the spiritual. Okay? There are points, uh, parts in scripture where kingdom of God can be a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Yes, but the majority of the time that you see kingdom of God, and, it's, and that is defined by the context in which it should appears, kingdom of God is talking about the spiritual kingdom, not the physical kingdom. Okay? And after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, this dispensation by grace through faith, outside of the works of the law, okay? You don't have to keep the law today to be saved, to stay saved, to be right with God. We have, we have refuted that on numerous occasions, okay? If you still want to believe you have to keep the law uh, and you've seen some of these videos that the Lord has given your servant and you still want to reject the truth, you're stupid. <gasps> How dare you? You're willfully ignorant. You are choosing not to want to believe in that truth that has been given to you. You're stupid. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. You're, being, you're willfully ignorant. You don't want to know the truth. Okay? You've heard it, therefore you are without excuse, but you don't want to know the truth. Hence, you're stupid. Okay? I love you. You're stupid if you're going to reject that. Okay? Not, not what I said. What the scriptures say. Okay? All right, you understand? <laughs> All right? But the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual, in this dispensation, by grace through faith, but see, God, who is a just, righteous God, offered it unto the Jew first. And then when Jewry as a nation, as a whole, rejected the kingdom of God, in Acts chapter 8, yeah, you see Philip, uh, and the Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopian eunuch who happened to be a Hamite. Okay? But they talk about the revival in Acts chapter 2. Right? Or in Acts chapter 8. Or in Acts chapter 19. you got to remember, Acts is a transition book. The sign gifts were there. Okay? Jewry as a whole rejected the kingdom of God. But individual Jews were being saved. And of course, us Gentiles grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the, the Jew jealous. And I can guarantee you, the Jewish people see these Ashbury revivals and stuff like that. And this Christianity, they, they, they click, turn it off. Because even they know. It's like, this is all hooey. This is nonsense. Okay? Even they know. All right? On a personal level, 
Yes, you can have a revival. Yes, you can. I believe so. And even in like a congregation, sure. But see, what was happening in Kentucky, that wasn't of God, dear friends. That was of the little G-God of this world, Satan. Now, in the scriptures, the word revival does not appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. Unless I misspelled it, and I don't think I did. But revive appears. Revive appears. Okay? Revival does not appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? If I misspelled revival, and I don't believe I did, and if I did not, if I mislooked or something, show me in the, in the, in the comment section where revival appears in the authorized version of the scripture. Okay? But revive appears. Revive appears. So let's look at those appearances. Okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scripture to Nehemiah chapter 4. Okay? We're not looking at reviving or revives or revived. We're looking at revive. Okay? We're concentrating on revive. All right? For a specific reason. All right? Now, law first mention is... Generally, not all the time, but generally, the first time that you see a word in Scripture that you're kind of like, what does that mean? It's usually defined by the first time it appears. Usually. Not all the time. But again, context. Context. But first time revive appears in Scripture. Revive, the word revive appears in Scripture. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. You want, to know, you want to know what else? You want to know what else? Every single time, it's in the Old Testament in the dispensation under the law. And every single time, doctrinally, specifically, doctrinally, talking about the Jews. Now, instruction and in righteousness, of course. But see, doctrine and instruction and in righteousness are two different things. The Lord had me to do a video where we broke down 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Uh, you know, well, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. Okay, we did a video on that. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember which one it was. I couldn't find it. <laughs> okay? But uh, there's a difference between doctrine and instruction and in righteousness. Okay? Doctrine is uh, what is pertinent within that dispensation, how someone is made right with God within that dispensation. Okay? That is what doctrine is. Instruction and in righteousness is how to live according to his righteousness also uh, within the dispensation, but and but you can learn how to fear the Lord by reading the Old Testament. That's instruction and in righteousness, okay? Doctrinally, the stuff, a majority of the stuff that you read in the Old Testament, doctrinally, as pertaining unto salvation for us today, uh, how you are made right with God, don't apply to us doctrinally. But instruction and in righteousness, teaching us how to fear the Lord, to abstain from all appearance of evil, bloop, yeah, buddy! Read that Old Testament, boy! Absolutely. But see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? But, Nehemiah chapter 4, Verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? We're going to look at every uh, all these seven appearances of the singular word revive. Okay? Nehemiah 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Like all the enemies of our Lord do, Satan hates the Jewish people. The Hebraic people that came from Shem. Okay? And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive, first appearance of the singular, 
Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Nehemiah's response to all this, Hear, O God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey to the land in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. And of course, people like to talk about the revivals in Ezra and Nehemiah, okay? which was also specifically for the Jewish people and in the dispensation under the law, okay? But there's the very first appearance of revive in the authorized version. One moment, please. Excuse me. Look at verse 2 again here in Nehemiah chapter 4. A lot of instruction and in righteousness, too, for us of the Church of the Living God in Nehemiah 4, verses 1 on to verse 6, when you have the enemy constantly harassing us with their algorithms or their Jesuit coadjutor or infiltrators who like to attack us, okay? Very good instruction and in righteousness here. But look at this. L look at this about, this is talking about stones. Okay, look at verse 2 again. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which they have burned? The stones, huh? Check this out in Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 on to verse 28. Ezekiel 36, verses 25 on to verse 28. Uh, and now, and also you can read uh, verses 21 on to verse 24, if you wish, about how the Lord has brought back Israel to his homeland in unbelief, okay? That, ha that happened in uh, 1948, yes. God, after he put his people, allowed his people to go through the Holocaust, okay? God brought his people back in unbelief to their homeland, okay? That happened. But here is what has not happened yet. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, note that's a lowercase s, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Okay? Now, verses 21 on to verse 24 has happened. Okay? Israel has been called back to its homeland in unbelief. Okay? There is going to be coming here... Um, I believe, a, a pull of every Jew, especially once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, that the Jews are going to return to their homeland once the Church of the Living God is taken out of the way. Okay, But Israel was brought back in unbelief according to Ezekiel chapter 36. Okay, But what has not happened yet, Israel has not accepted their Messiah. Israel has not accepted their Messiah. Israel does not believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord, their God, or their King. They call him a false prophet. The original uh, expunged writings of the Talmud, uh, where it says uh, that Jesus is in hell and boiling excrement, okay? Yeah. Jewry to this day has not accepted their Messiah. Jewry at this very day, as in the days leading up to the Holocaust and World War II. Read the book Night by Eli Wiesel, or Eli Wiesel, the book Night, where he go, talks about what he went through in the Holocaust. The Jews in that time before the Holocaust, World War II Holocaust, they are doing exactly what they're doing today. But today it's even worse than it was in World War II. Okay? 
reading their Talmud, practicing Kabbalistic magic, okay? So, Israel is still inflamed with idols. Israel still has a stony heart, okay? So, in Nehemiah, you see, in verse 2, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Tie that in here with Ezekiel chapter 36. And then, of course, uh, and we're going to read a little bit out of Ezekiel 37 a little bit later, okay? So, who's going to be doing the reviving? Who led the revival in Ezra and Nehemiah? It was the Lord. Who led the rev this revival in Kentucky? The little jig god of this world. Okay? Now, Psalm 85. Psalm 85. Psalm 85. I'm going to read some Psalms, you and me. Okay? Psalm 85. Again, revive. And again, revival does not appear in the authorized version of Scripture. Okay? Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of the Christians. You weren't expecting that, were you? No, Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Shelah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou, wilt thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Now, so far, the two contexts, okay? In Nehemiah, revive the stones. Talking about what? The Jews. Right here, context, Psalm 85. Context, uh, revive who? The Jews. Instruction in righteousness for us today, yes. Doctrine, no. No. Okay? This is talking about reviving, to be revived of the Jewish people, the Hebraic people who today, right now as we speak, reject as a whole, as a nation, Jewry rejects their Messiah. Individual Hebrews, individual Jews, Hebraic people, yes, they can be saved today, and they do get saved today. Absolutely they do. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? But in a whole, Jewry. No, not yet. Not in this dispensation. Not at all, dear friend. Let's continue. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. If this Kentucky revival if it were of if it were of the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father, it would be a lasting revival. Meaning it would turn. It would be something that would turn this nation. It would be lasting. You look in the history of the revivals here in this country in America, every single revival did this. Entertainment, entertainment, fleshly, hoorah, and then because it wasn't of God wasn't of God. Okay? Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. And the whole thing about the Jesus movement, God is love, and it promoted promiscuity, even sodomy. Okay? And they made a movie about it, and I'm sure it's going to be a, a very entertaining move, movie, and all these Wicked Christians are going to be watching it and praising it. Oh, it's such a godly movie. Yeah, the little jig out of this world. A coincidence that these two things, this Hollywood movie and this wicked movement in Kentucky happen, coinciding at the same time? Is that a coincidence? No. Is it of the Lord? No. 
It's of Satan. Okay? Let's continue in here. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Now, okay, look at this psalm again. Look at this psalm, okay? The turning point of this psalm is verse 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. And verse 7, it says, Shew us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. So if you want to talk in terminology of a revival, okay, you have verses 1 on to verse 7. But what happens when God revives? I will hear what God the Lord will speak. And then you see, okay, about his people not returning to folly. How many of these kids, this whatever that was, Generation Z, I have no idea yet what that means, okay? But this Generation Z, how many of them are going to abstain from all appearance of evil? How many of them will endure for a while until persecution come for the word, which they don't have, because they were, if they were using anything, they were probably using Bibles. I can guarantee you they weren't reusing the scriptures, the authorized version, okay? See, it would be a lasting thing. Okay? Is there an uh, individually? I don't know. But if someone individually were to come to the Lord in that, the Lord would be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, he would get them out of that. Even thus. But you see what happens from verses 8 on to verse 13, the fruit of being revived, as it were, by who? The Lord. Hmm? Look at every single revival. Big, big name, the revival that got attention here in America. Look at it. Entertainment. Yay, yay, we love each other. And boom. Because revival is not coming in this dispensation like the devil wants you to believe. There will, I believe, a revival come where everybody will be following Satan. Because he gives them what they want. He gives you what you want. You want entertainment. Eh? You want your flesh to be uh, gratified. You want Satan to pat you on your head as you're running off a cliff. Like you got that Roma army devil witch. You know, to, uh, justifying pornography and sin. That's what you want. And you want Satan to deliver that to you through Christianity. Because God loves you. This isn't funny. This isn't funny. Psalm 137. Psalm 137. By the rivers of, of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Am I reading the right one? One second. Psalm 138. Good thing I checked. Good thing I checked. Psalm 138, not Psalm 137. I beg your pardon. Please, for, yeah, yeah, look at me. Huh? Yeah. Some of you have accused me that I actually went to a cemetery school. <laughs> Ask any one of my enemies. They'll tell you, no, that guy didn't go to no cemetery school. Come on. <laughs> even they would, even they would joyfully say, no, he, he is not college educated. <laughs> okay. But Psalm 138, not Psalm 137. Excuse me. I will praise thee with my whole heart. For the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word, thy word above all thy name. What does that mean? That means that the word of God you can trust. He has staked everything upon it. You can trust the word of God. Dear friend, the NIV, non-King James Version, the NLT, the ESV, the New American Standard, the Holman Christian Standard, the Revised Standard Version, the New American Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, the Mass 
Those are Bibles. Those were written by man, written by Satan. And uh, uh, the, what they're based off of, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus are held in captivity by Rome. Okay, those are not the word of God. The authorized version of, of the scriptures, the King James Version, is the word of God. Okay, those what I just mentioned, those are not the word of God. Okay, God has staked everything. He has magnified his word above his name. And when you got, what, over 300 Bible translations? <laughs> yeah, and then you got guys like Bible, uh, flock box. You know, find you a, a Bible that suits you. Preference has nothing to do with it. God wrote one book. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. That during this Kentucky revival thing. Where were the scriptures? I'm sure they had a plentitude of Bibles. But where were the scriptures? Yeah. In the day when I cried, thou answeredest me. And strengthenedest me. With strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Yes, he giveth grace unto the lowly. Mm -hmm. Yes, he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Now we see in verse 2 about a temple. Okay, Again, context. A psalm of David, okay? A psalm of David. This psalm is talking about, number one, magnify thy word above thy name, okay? You can trust the authorized version of the scriptures, but we also see about the temple, and verse four, about all the kings of the earth going to worship him, okay? All the kings of the earth shall praise, shall praise thee, excuse me, oh Lord. Has that happened in history where all the kings of the earth praise the Lord? No. When is that going to happen? Well, number one, this thing about the temple, okay? And some will bring up about the temple like in, um, in uh, you know, in the time of Jacob's trouble. A third temple is going to be built. They're going to rebuild the temple, and it's going to be rebuilt, I believe, on where the Dome of the Rock, the whatever Mosque of Omar is. Uh, they blow that up. And I've even talked to uh, Muslims about this. What happens when that gets blown up? They even themselves will admit, yeah, that's going to cause us to go jihad. Okay, even they will tell you that. Uh, the one I was talking to, he was a little bit, he tiptoed, but it's like, come on, man, you're a Muslim. They destroy your holy place, the Dome of the Rock, and on top of that, insult you by putting the Jewish temple on that? The, the Muslims are going to go blah, blah, berserk. That's what's going to happen, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, the third temple is going to be rebuilt, okay? But during the kingdom of heaven, the question comes up, um, is the temple going to be there? And... What we see in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, okay, come on, Revelation chapter 21, okay, Revelation 20 is about the kingdom of heaven, okay, the kingdom of heaven, you have the second coming in Revelation chapter 19, you have the establishing of the kingdom of heaven in Revelation chapter 20, okay, and you see that Satan is bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Hence, the thousand-year reign of Christ on the earth. 
the millennial kingdom, as they like to call it. The word millennial does not appear in scripture, okay? But the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth, the kingdom of heaven. It is during the kingdom of heaven when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine, okay? The kingdom of heaven, okay? There is quite a while yet until the Sermon on the Mount is doctrinal. Oh, quite a ways yet to go until that happens, okay? The kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of Christ, is when the Sermon on the Mount will be doctrine. Not today. Instruction in righteousness, yes. But see, that's what that Jesus uh, movement did. It, it was basing a lot of it off of the Sermon on the Mount and the lovey-dovey stuff that they call of what Jesus spoke of when he was offering the kingdom unto the Jewish people before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? All right? They took that and twisted it. And a lot of it, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. Turn the other cheek. Yes. Instruction and righteousness. Yes. Doctrine. No. No. Doctrine, that comes into play during the kingdom of heaven. Because guess what? During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. What, Brad, what do you mean? Because you're going to be able to see the Lord on the throne. Okay? Read Hebrews 11, verse 1, what faith is, okay? Actually, instead of just jabbering about that, let's, let's look at Hebrews 11, verse 1, okay? Want a really good definition of what faith is? Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance for things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And today we walk by faith, not by sight. Ooh. What do you think that whole revival thing was? Sight! <laughs> and a lot of these people are colleges, educated beyond their own intelligence. Yeah. But see, the kingdom of heaven is in Revelation chapter 20. Okay? Then Satan is let loose out of that bottomless pit. And then... Big battle comes where uh, the Lord sends fire down from heaven and then the great white throne of judgment. And then ushers in in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So there is every, because up to Revelation chapter 21, okay, you have no scriptural evidence that says that the third temple will be destroyed. There's no scriptural evidence to support that. Okay? Yes, a third rebuilt temple. There's plenty of scripture to support that, that a third temple is going to be rebuilt. Yes, yes. Okay? But you have no evidence whatsoever that shows us that the third temple that is going to be built during the time of Jacob's trouble is destroyed. But here's the thing. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 22, you read... And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. What does that mean? Well, verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there is no more sea. A new heaven and a new earth. And in this new heaven and new earth, there is no temple because, because why? We just saw it. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Okay? Uh, this is the final um, dispensation, eternity, where there will be no, no more sin. Sin is eradicated uh, in uh, Revelation 20 at the great white throne of judgment. Thus then begins the seventh and final dispensation, eternity, no more sin. Okay? So, and back in Psalm 138, where he says, I will worship toward thy holy temple. Okay? Uh, will there the third temple be there during the kingdom of heaven? I believe so. Because you got no evidence that suggests that it is ever destroyed. Okay, but we we just looked at evidence that during uh, eternity there will be no king, there will be no um, a temple because we just saw. 
Why is that? Because of a new heavens and a new earth. Okay? But, verse here, 14. Uh, 4, excuse me. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Hmm. Now this revive in verse 7, okay? Again, revive in context is for who? The Jewish people. The Jewish people. Okay? And for this, Zechariah chapter 17, uh, Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. Beg your pardon. Verses 16 on to verse 19. Okay? Verse 4 there in Psalm 138. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. All the kings of the earth praise thee. Is that happening now? No. When will that happen? Kingdom of heaven. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 16 in uh, Zechariah 14 is very important because it tells you several things. The nations that are left, that survived when the Lord threw fire and brimstone on them when you read in Revelation 20 where they can pass Jerusalem, okay? Those nations that survived that onslaught from the Lord, okay? And we also know that the law is going to be in a form active during the kingdom of heaven because we see a reference onto the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Sacrifices for sins? Perhaps no, because the perfect sacrifice has already been made. But see, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. And the law is not a faith. The law is works, okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, number one, we see that those who are left of the onslaught in Revelation 20, okay, they're going to, you know, those who are left are going to... There's an onslaught before that compassing the stone, you know, when he comes back in uh, Revelation 19, excuse me. In Revelation chapter 19, he comes uh, back and with the sword of his mouth and this, the scripture is called the sword of the spirit, okay? That's what that is, excuse me. In Revelation 19, when he comes back at his second coming, he's going to speak his word, okay? The sword of his mouth. And those who survive that, because this is for the kingdom of heaven, are going to come up and worship at the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, excuse me for confusing that. Okay, but verse 17. And it shall come to pass that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to the, keep the feast of tabernacles. And this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. In Revelation 19, excuse me. I <laughs> made a few boo-boos here, but praise the Lord, he's corrected me on every one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I never make mistakes, unlike some of these perfect preachers, huh? Yeah. In Revelation 19 and his second coming, he destroys that army, the armies of that man of sin, the son of perdition, by the sword of his mouth, by speaking. This is the sword of the spirit. He speaks his word and he destroys them, okay? And those nations that survive that onslaught, they have to come and worship the Lord during the Feast of Tabernacles because during the kingdom of heaven, sin is still going to be there even though Satan is bound, okay? Sin is still going to be there, okay? So the law is in place, okay? And it's all works. It's after, after Satan is totally defeated and thrown into the lake of fire, that eternity, the new heaven and the new earth happen. No more sin, okay? Yeah, excuse me. It's the This is reference on to uh, verse 16 in Zechariah 14 when the Lord comes back in Revelation 19 and in Revelation 20 is when the Lord sends fire, okay? Excuse me for confusing those, okay? <laughs> now go back to Psalm 138 again, okay? And look at that again, Psalm 138. Look at that again, Psalm 138. All right? So we see about mention here of a temple in verse 2. 
and verse 4 about all the kings of the earth shall praise thee. That hasn't happened yet. Okay, so this revive here that is mentioned in verse 7 in Psalm 138, it's not for us today. Okay, it's talking specifically about the Jews. And in specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble leading into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Now, Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Verses 13 unto the close of the chapter. Again, context, revive for us today or for the Jews. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. But the wind shall carry them away. Vanish, vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up. Prepare the way. Take, the, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty one, who, one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to, revi and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm? So you see revive appearing twice, seven in seven verses, okay? In seven verses. But here you see it uh, appearing twice, okay? So what is he reviving? Okay? The spirit of the humble and the heart of the contrite ones. Today, to be saved, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to man up and take responsibility. It's your fault that he died and went to the cross. You put him on that cross and have the fear of the Lord and call upon his name in the fear of the Lord because if he doesn't save you, you're going to go to hell. Okay? Where your worm will die not and the fire is never quenched. Okay? All right? But in context, okay? Look at this in context. Okay? My people... This is written on, under the law. Written on to who? The Jews. Okay? Is there instruction in righteousness in this? Yes. Doctrinally? No. They're reviving there now. And today, like I said, uh, humble and contrite. Yes. Psalm 51. Okay? Psalm 51. Okay? You read Psalm 51. Okay? Okay? You have to be of a humble and contrite heart, you know. Um, you have to be contrite. You have to take responsibility. It's your fault that he went to the cross. It's my fault that he went to the cross. And you gotta, you better fear the Lord because he's the one who can send you to hell. Okay? You gotta ask him to forgive you. You gotta call upon his name. See, you gotta be broken of your self-righteousness. Man up and have contrition, godly sorrow. You better be afraid of him. And see, this revival and this Jesus movement and this Jesus whatever movie coincidentally come out at the same time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You need to be broken. You need to have godly sorrow. And you need to fear the Lord. And all of that it has nothing, all that revival stuff in this movie has nothing to do with the fear of the Lord, but glorifying and gratifying flesh. Love is love, right? Nonsense. Verse 16. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. And unless the Lord had shortened those days... No flesh would be saved. This has nothing to do with us today, dear friend. We're looking at the verses of Scripture where revive appears, the seven times that it appears in Scripture. Okay? In seven verses. Okay? All right? All of them in context are for who? The Jewish people. 
For the iniquity of his, of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth, and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him. I will lead him also, and restore comforts unto him, and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is, a, is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And in context, this, this has not happened. In context, doctrinally, this is not for us today. These are things that are going to happen when Jewry receives, accepts their Messiah, their King, their God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? All right, now, Hosea! Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Hosea is easy to find. Find Daniel. And uh, Hosea is right after Daniel. Hosea chapter 6. This is 1 on verse 3. Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Now you got to remember, again, who is Hosea speaking unto? The Jews. Okay? The Jewish people. Ephraim. The Jewish people, okay, Israel, okay, the northern kingdom, okay. But he's speaking on to who? The Hebraic Jews, okay? The Jews. Scripture, when it talks about Jews, is labeled on to who? The Hebraic people, okay? All right? But he's talking on to the Jews. All right? Now, verse 2, after two days will he revive us. In the third day he will rise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come on to us as the rain, as the latter and former rain onto the earth. There is an appearance of latter rain. And as I said to you earlier in this video, questions about that. Check the video that will be in the description box. Okay. Latter rain in every time, in every appearance, has everything to do with future fulfillment onto the Jewish people. Just as we see here, as Revive does, also in context onto the Jew. But in verse 2, you see the unmistakable third day thing. Okay? And then with that, we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? Alright, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Today... How do you define the gospel? Moreover, brethren, verses 1 on verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Not being saved. Saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? And remember, Jesus first came, he was sent unto who? The Jews. I came not uh, but unto the lost sheep of Israel. He came first, preaching the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, the Hebraic people. After the death, burial, and resurrection, Brought in this dispensation. The time of the Gentiles, yes. By grace through faith, yes. But first, the kingdom of God had to first be offered specifically on to the Jews. Okay? All right? All right? But Jewry as a nation rejected the kingdom of God. Hence, you know... Us Gentiles, our, us Gentiles were already a part of it. But see, the preaching of the kingdom of God, this gospel went out unto the Gentiles after, after Acts chapter 7. It was still by grace through faith. Yes, it was. From the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes. 
Okay? Why? Because the perfect sacrifice for sins was made. Okay? But God, being righteous and just and fair and equal, he had to offer it on to the Jewish Jews first, even though he knew that they were going to reject it. Okay? All right? All right? So, but still, okay? The thing about the, um, the third day here in Hosea, yes, yes. And Jesus was a Jew. Jesus is a Jew. Okay? Okay? He is the God of the Jews. But he is also the God of the Gentiles because he has allowed it for us, the Gentile, to be grafted into the tree of the Jew. A lot of people like to say, well, God is racist. But yet he has still made a way for us Gentiles to be saved. Yeah. 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 So here... Okay, and Hosea here, revive us, the Jews, in the third day, he will raise us up. And in comparison, our Lord Jesus on the third day rose from the dead. Okay? All right? All right? That tie in there with 1 Corinthians. Okay? That's why we looked at that. But still, the word revive itself. Okay? Revive itself. In context here, it's not to the Jews. Another place in Hosea. Hosea 14. Hosea 14. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. Who? Israel. Has Israel returned unto the Lord their God individually? Sure. Yes, there are many individual Hebraic people who are saved and going to go to heaven, who are of the church of the living God. Absolutely. But Jewry in and of itself, has that happened today? Well, no. When will that happen? Hmm? When will that happen? Oh, not for a long time. Kingdom of heaven. And part of them... When that man of sin, the son of perdition, walks into the third rebuilt temple, Jewry is going to be like, oh, we messed up. That's why in Matthew 24, he says to flee for the mountain, to the mountains. Those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, okay? Yeah, okay? But, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. A sure will not, shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, Ye are our gods, for in thee the fatherless find mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily, and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn, and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Revive as the corn. Context. Israel. Hmm. Israel. Israel. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. Future fulfillment, future coming of Israel unto their Lord, their Father, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, their Savior, their Mashiach. Context again, dear friend. Context again. It's on to the Jews. It's on to the Jews. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So, what have we here so far? Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 1. 
Verses 1 and 2. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, upon Shigianoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. In wrath remember mercy. Again, context of Habakkuk. Revive is on the who? The Jews. In the midst of thy year, and revive thy work in the midst of thy years. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. What is he talking about? Oh, verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. The kingdom of heaven. Uh, remember, Jesus is known as the son of David. Okay, the kingdom. And when they call Jesus the son of David, that is the Jews acknowledging that Jesus is the king of the Jews. When they call Jesus the son of David, they are referring to him as king. That's what that means. So when will the kingdom of the tabernacle of David that has fallen and closed up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old? Has that happened yet? No. When will that happen? Come on, you should know this by now. During the kingdom of heaven, at his second coming, he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven, which is here being compared onto the as David, because Jesus is the king of kings, lord of lords, the king of the Jews, okay? He, uh, as king, is going to be sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay, that's what that means, as king of... Uh, king of David, or, you know, King David, okay, son of David, excuse me, okay. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, that hasn't happened yet, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And as we already saw in Zechariah 14, as I, and we are seeing here, during the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be farming. It's going to be nothing like we have today. It's going to be farming. Because if you don't have rain, you don't have crops. Today, they can make crops in a laboratory. In a Jesuit laboratory. Okay? They can produce food in factories. Alright? It's going to be a far, It's going to be an agrarian society. During the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So what have we seen at Revive? Every appearance of Revive, singular form thereof, is in context onto who? The Jewish people. Okay? And to Revive is to what? To bring again from the dead. And as we started this video out, they went out from us, but they were never of us. Okay? All right. Dear friends, a worldwide revival returning to truth is not going to happen. You can have a revival. Sure you can. If you're dead inside, okay? I don't know how that happens, but we, we go through dry spells and moments where we, you know, it's like for, for whatever reasons, right? Okay, a town, a small town or whatever, sure. But on a national scale, it's not going to happen. On a global world scale, there's not a revival coming. The revival that happened in Kentucky was not of, the, of God our Father. It was of the God of this world. Okay. The revival that these Jesuit trained 
preachers and teachers want you to, are trying to convince you through the latter rain movement and stuff like that and twisting scripture and looking about well what about Nehemiah and Ezra look at that different dispensation it's on to the Jews. Well, what about Acts? That's an, a book of transition. When the sign gifts were there, the sign gifts are no longer available. They're not there anymore. Okay. No. Oh, no, dear friend. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. The revival that will come very well is put here. In Ezekiel 37, verse 11 on, and verse 14. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And ye shall put my spirit in you. Has that happened today? No. And ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. And performed it, saith the Lord. Israel is in their homeland, but has the Lord uh, taken the stony flesh out of their stony hearts out of their flesh and given them a heart of flesh? Huh? Have they accepted Jesus as their Mashiach? Their king, the son of David? No. As the nation, as jewelry in a whole, that has not happened yet. The revival that will come, the scriptural revival that will come will come in context onto the Jewish people. Not today. Not today. Individual revival? Sure. Yes. Okay. Could like could there an actual God-centered return to truth happen in the town of Woodstock, Illinois, where I live? How about a little congregation? A little body, say, of a uh, hundred people? Sure. Why, why not 50,000, Brad? <laughs> it's in a church building. I can guarantee you they weren't referencing the scriptures, but their Bibles, okay? It was all over social media. It won't last. And it came out and coinciding with the Jesus movement. It wasn't anything that had to do with repenting and turning from sin, but God loves you. It wasn't of God, dear friend. Even if you want it to be. But see, here, here's what so many of these false prophets who talk to you about revival this and revival that, okay? And yes, I do believe a revival will come. Brad, one that's headed by Satan. Because the whole world is going to worship who? That man of sin, the son of perdition. The whole world is going to worship the devil during the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, the, the whole world is going to be, you know, with the... the um, the mark of the beast and stuff like that. Not every single person, spirit, soul, and body, you know, but uh, the whole world is going to be going after the beast. Yeah. So there will be a revival coming. One that's headed by Satan. One that has all the glamour and the glitz. One that's of entertainment. One that makes your flesh feel good but one that is a returning to truth? No. See, what these people who preach to you about revival this, revival that, my foot, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 10 on verse 15. 
As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we, like these poor people who were deceived by this satanic-led revival in Kentucky. And are also going to be strengthened in this uh, satanic revival by that stupid Hollywood movie that came out coincidentally during the time of this revival. <laughs> no coincidences. Okay? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel! For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And we discussed about this in the previous video. Okay? Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. And of course, uh, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Okay? Titus chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. You don't go out there preaching, God loves you, God's not it. No. You go out there and preach the love of God. Yes, Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, okay? You're going to go to hell unless you repent of your self-righteousness, take a responsibility that you put him on the cross and fear him and call upon his name and that, that he may save you. Because if you don't, you're going to hell, okay? That's the love of God. That's the love of God. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we go out and preach. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. You don't go out there and love them into... That's what that was, that, re that revival in this movie. God loves you. No, you know what you do? You want to preach the love of God? You go out there and you scare the hell out of people. That's the love of God, dear friend. The love of God is Christ and Him crucified. And you want the love of God? You want the love of God? You got to be broken, boy. We've already read it. It's not, it's not my word of fire like a hammer that breaketh break the rock in pieces? Huh? You got to be broken. You got to be broken of, I'm a good person. God loves me unconditionally. That's not true. You reject the gospel. You're a child of wrath. We covered this in the previous video. Okay? About how Roma, how a devil witch is telling you evil is good. Okay? You go out there and preach the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The blood that he shed on the cross. And unless you come to him on his terms, not your own, the way of the cross, you are going to go to hell and burn forever where your worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. That's where you're going. But, but no, what do you want to do? You want to boot the door, right? And Jesus is the door. You want to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. You're a thief and a robber. You preach the gospel. You scare the hell out of people. No, we there for the terror. We're not. The, I don't want to scare people. Then you don't want to serve our Lord Jesus Christ, and you don't want to see people saved. Is it fear or is it love? Again, let me write that down so I don't forget that. Okay, uh, okay, because we've addressed this before: fear or love. Okay. You're running off a cliff and you're going to dive headlong <laughs> and fall to your death. And what does the enemy do? The Christians, the ministers of Satan, what do they do? 
God loves you. Keep running. He's going to go headlong into hell. Keep running. God loves you. It's okay. Don't worry. When those who truly love you. Whoa, stop, dude. Stop. Stop. Get. Stop running. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to go to hell. Stop. And that hurts. And that hurts. The ones who love you are going to tell you the truth. The ones who love you are going to tell you a truth that burns, that hurts you. Because the truth of Scripture, the truth of salvation, cannot be a glory unless it has first a death and suffering. death to yourself and that dear friend is what everyone is avoiding look at the easy believers and heretics perfect example just believe what about repentance that's a work what about prayer that's a work never mind that just believe and you're saved Shouldn't I, shouldn't I live godly? You, you should but don't worry about it if you, if you still are doing things of the world And see, this, 2 Timothy chapter 3, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 5, okay? Hello? McFly, Paul tells us, they ain't going to be coming a revival. Like what is being preached to you on TV and, be, and these guys, I mean, look at all of them. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. They conveniently like to skip these verses. These people who talk about revival for today. Yes, there will be a revival coming of, of the Jewish people. Yes, there will. But see, remember what it means to be antichrist, to be against and to replace. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the world's got to go after him and love him, right? Yeah, yeah. So Satan is the author of these revivals that you are seeing, dear friend. Anti-Christ. To replace and to be against. So Satan is trying to copycat a revival that will come in the future pertaining on to the Jewish people, but he's trying to copy that today to make you feel good so that so many of you will go after him and not after the God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. It's as simple as that. First, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the alive, and the dead at his appearing and... His kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings. Doctrine. All long suffering and doctrine. Be instant, in season, out of season. Brother, sister, you want you go out your door to get the mail, walk the dog, take I don't give a rat's rear end. Take the scriptures with you. Brad, I'm just going 20 feet. I don't care. Be prepared. You Let the Lord put you in a situation when you ain't prepared and don't have the sword on you when you could use it and need it and you don't have it. And you don't spend time enough in the scriptures. Hmm? Tell me how that feels, huh? I spare you from that. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned on to fable. God loves you unconditionally. God's not angry at you. Just believe. We're in the latter. We are receiving the blessings of the latter rain. There is a revival coming. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 9. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. He's referencing Acts chapter 15, okay? When after Acts chapter 15, everybody, including Peter, was preaching what Paul preached, okay? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Okay? I, I know I said on to verse 9. You can read on to verse 9 if you wish. But... Um, uh, we'll, we'll stop at verse 5. Go ahead and read on to verse 9 if you wish. Okay? Read the whole chapter. Read the whole book! Okay? See, there are these false brethren brought in unawares. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Usually they are Catholic coadjutors working for the Jesuit order who are well trained in the art of deception, who know just enough scripture to cause problems. Yeah. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 19. But these as natural beasts, brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, and... Uh, you read Psalm 10. I'd hold your place here. What does God think of the covetous? What does God think of the covetous? Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Come on, get there. Psalm 10, 1 on the 3. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhor means to have extreme hatred for. We are to cleave to that which is good and to abhor that which is evil. Paul said that. Back in Second Peter. Picking up at verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. All these people at these revivals 
for while they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Oh, yes. By a good Christian experience. By good CCM music, right? Give you entertainment, theater. Give you an emotionalism. Sensationalism. Sensationalism and emotionalism is a pathetic excuse for what comes of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Entertainment and emotionalism, sensationalism, is Satan's replacement for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. And that's what many of you who have fallen for this wicked um, revival, that's what you have taken instead of the truth. For, why, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. There's Out of those 70,000 that they claim, anyone who is truly, genuinely saved, dude, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. The Lord's like, yeah, bolt! I'm out of here! Remember, there are millions of, Maybe even a billion Christians out there. But there are thousands of the church of the living God. Well, they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. And you know, too, in closing, see what those revivals were, were of the world the world, the flesh, and the devil. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, we are commanded today as the church of the living God, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And who are you proving that to? As an ambassador for Christ, living your life according to the scripture, not on some emotional roller coaster that like a drug, you need to go have your fix again. And 1 Peter chapter 5, just one verse, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Verses 8 and 9. Be sober. Those people that went to that revival, they were made drunk by the, the wine of Mystery Babylon. Mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And let's finish this video, James chapter 4, which is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. But instruction and righteousness, you Christians, you want an emotional experience. You want a change. You want something new that costs you nothing. And salvation uh, is nothing of your doing. No, it is not. But there is a price to pay. Actually, there is a death. Like I said, the glory of the salvation of the Lord cannot be such until there is first a death and a suffering that comes at the result of that death. You dying to yourself. And see, Christianity, easy believism, wants to take that death away. 
and genuine salvation cannot happen until you die to yourself, till you die to this notion that you are your own God and that you can judge good and evil, that you are good, that you are righteous, that you're not the bad person. James chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 10. From whence, comes war, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Why? Because ye ask not. Why isn't in there? Excuse me, let me reread that. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. And cannot obtain. Ye fight in war. Ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, and receive not. Because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. And also, you know, people like to say, you know, like the twist about how, where the Lord says, believe what you're asking for, that you receive it, and you'll receive it. And they like to twist that and say that, oh, well, believe that God will give you a million dollars, or God will bring you up. Fine, look, a woman or a husband or whatever. Uh, but see, you're doing that out of covetousness. And we've already looked at how the Lord abhors the covetous. Okay, you're asking for things to gratify your flesh. Okay, okay. God's will for you is that you would adhere to the scriptures. Okay, and there has to be a death first before there can be a rebirth. All right, okay. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do, you, do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That begin, that's the start. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You can't resist the devil unless you submit yourself to God first, friend. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Dear friends, dear friend, that revival that happened in Kentucky was not of God. There is not coming a genuine revival, one that is of the Lord. When that will come, will come in a time when it is pertinent on to the Jewish people receiving their Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. But a returning to truth revival on a grand scale, it's not going to happen. You can have a revival. A, a congregation can have a revival, sure. 70,000 people coinciding with a movie glorifying the Jesus movement, that um, the free love on the heels of the 60s, make love, not what? Come on, people. There'll be quite a few links in the description box for if you have other questions that have not been answered in this, or if you have anything like that of that nature. Okay? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, thank you to those of you who uh, pray for us and uh, that help us. Thank you so much. <sighs> <Whew>. <laughs> Pray for one another. Love one another. Be out there preaching the true love of God. Christ and him crucified. Okay. 
So that's going to be it. I'm going to get this uploaded. That's uh, some minor editing to do. We love you. Thank you for watching this if you do. I'll see you in the next video.